And the topic for today is uh, the related materials. You all have uh, seen the program, I suppose. Today, that is uh, related materials. And to talk about that, well, it is my pleasure to welcome a lot of experts from different horizons. And I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves quickly. And then we'll have a discussion. So could you take a, a mic? Christine Boros, you are the first one to speak. So you just say who you are, and then we'll see the slides. Mrs. Broris, well, I know you as uh, a research engineer for uh, materials, technologies, and so on. What could I add? Well, I like to say that I am a texture texturgist because I mix up high technologies and textures. So texturgy, that is uh, what I uh, what I uh, am involved in. Texturgy, texturgy. Now, my neighbor to the left, Sophie Lumière, CS Mode. What do you do at CS Mode? Are you a texturgist too? No, not really. We uh, learn a lot, as a matter of fact. I am a uh, shoe making and uh, road related material uh, professor, and I've been asked to intervene here today. So let me repeat that uh, related material that is a consideration. Well, we said that uh, to during the press conference this morning. You know, uh, the public opinion is uh, very versatile. There is a demand today for uh, a different type of consideration of the natural material and uh, replacement material. Now, what, uh, what are you doing, Mr. Le Prisé? Well, I am a teacher. I've been a teacher at the Boulle uh, School for uh, 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 cabinet making. We have uh, designed or we have uh, developed uh, different types of war woods, uh, inflatable woods and so on. You have invented the inflatable wood. Well, what would be of interest for me is how we can uh, mix up uh, hard material and flexible material and soft material. How do you do that at Ecopel, Mr. Brunois? Well, we try and find the right way in the middle of all that. I am Arnaud. I uh, work at Ecopel, what, one of the leaders in terms of uh, 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 alternate uh, fur or uh, false fur. We also promote uh, new types of furs uh, that are less synthetic and uh, closer to the natural fur. Well, this is very interesting. You said that this morning you eliminate the fossil source to uh, get to a substitute material. Well, at Les Compagnons du Devoir, the high-quality workers are trained. I think you have uh, taken over a large part of the uh, activities dealing with the flexible or soft material. Yes, I'm Blandine de la Housse. I'm in charge of the uh, 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 technical Procidetech at the Compagnon de France. That is a repertory of all flexible materials. So the young people we train for uh, uh, leather, leather um, uh, work or uh, uh, shoe making and so on and so forth are trained to this uh, new type of material. We'll uh, come back to this later on. Well, that's a good initiative. You know, it's very important. Mr. Oms, who is very familiar to TV and papers. Well, we know him because he has done a fantastic job on the composite, uh, uh, on the basis of uh, flax. Well, we, I have created a startup which has become a real uh, company uh, that is a, a composite material. Well, uh, that was my job, but I really fell in love with flax and I have developed a textile material based on uh, vegetal resin impregnated flax material. Well, I hope that the catwalk music won't uh, prevent you from hearing us. Well, uh, Benedict, you, I come from the uh, fashion school on the uh, leather making activities, and we work on the new challenges for uh, the uh, leather 
materials based on textile or, or organic material. This is what is going to be the link with everything we have mentioned. What is what is the Proceditech? Let us start uh, by the beginning. Proceditech, that is a repertory of all know-how of the craftsmen in the professions that I mentioned before, flexible material. We are dealing with flexible and soft material for the moment, but the idea is to have a repertory of material for all uh, workers, I mean members of the Compagnon du Devoir. In this Proceditech, or uh, process library, we could call it, we find all uh, lining, all assemblies uh, that could be used in a classical way or uh, be more innovative. We know that uh, we'll never have finished this inventory. It can never be completed. We permanently have new know-how, new way of uh, working and new materials that uh, compel us to revise the processes maybe a hand process or a machine, complex machine process. Concerning uh, processes and complex machine, this will be a transition to uh, Stephen's speech. What do you do with your uh, plastic and, fl and inflatable uh, wood? Well, it has been invented at the school, school in 2008 by one of the Arca founder. That is a furniture creation uh, workshop. It's um, very much involved in R&D, and we co-finance thesis, one at the Ecole des Mines on the plasma projection on wood, which has nothing to do with the flexible material, though we could make it flexible, if I may say so. Uh, so let us say that uh, we are, uh, uh, we have been very successful in uh, making the wood uh, f soft, either by uh, uh, inflation or whatever. That is the art of uh, uh, plating a very fine uh, plate of wood on uh, another piece of furniture. Uh, for the flexible wood that is a uh, natural uh, uh, rubber which is used, we, all, we have also worked to develop uh, uh, solvent-free glues. And in terms of production processes, we have uh, uh, we have uh, reused a machine for textile gradation, I mean to carve uh, 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 patrons, you know, to design or to cut garments. So these machines have got cutting edges that are digital and you know uh, we thought about uh, digitizing this uh, cutting process. So we place the wood upside down on a, uh, on a uh, plate, um, just uh, the time to carve it. And I've got, I've got uh, uh, samples, by the way. Well, the principle consists in uh, reusing traditional processes or uh, innovative processes uh, to uh, serve the ideas we have. Well, this should be, should be interesting for you. So how do you uh, reuse uh, those, uh, uh, those uh, materials? Well, at the very beginning, we use flax. Uh, and uh, we have integrated this uh, flax into a related material. So we are right at the crossroad uh, uh, between uh, plasturgy and textile industry. So it creates new ways of uh, approaching uh, this uh, uh, industry. It remains a flax textile, but with this uh, resin, this uh, uh, textile resin, we have a new approach to uh, material creation. So that is a bridge between uh, textile research, uh, wood research, composite applications. And at the moment, we also work with the postdoc to try and extend the utilization of this technology and everything is possible. Sky is the limit and that's why uh, we've got uh, beautiful uh, companies uh, such as Arca and others. Yes, yes, you need to innovate. You, We also work a lot on the connected machinery and the technique that we have used makes it possible to integrate connectivity into our uh, actions at the moment. All those innovation, Christine, you've been the first one to uh, throw a light on this. I remember a study you have uh, carried out some 10 years ago. Uh, uh, yes, actually, uh, actually, 
uh, 10 years ago with the French uh, Fashion Institute. I developed an observatory for those textiles techniques, and we worked a lot on a mapping of the textile skills. And this mapping, of course, has uh, completely evolved and changed uh, with the applications in many sectors such as uh, uh, airspace, medical and so on. We work now on three, 3D and uh, knitting. Knitting is also something very um, uh, important at the moment. Knitting is a 3D printing, if I may say so. We generate the material we need, uh, contrary to the uh, weaving. Well, in the technological field, we have seen a number of uh, innovation uh, and in those uh, uh, knitting technologies, uh, well, uh, I found some of them that were very surprising for me. Yes, today, in the last uh, show that was in December, the machine show in Barcelona, we have uh, seen knitting machines that can, by uh, shape recognition, they can recognize a piece of garment and reproduce it by knitting. So, uh, uh, since we talked about connectivity, knitting is also the future to uh, uh, have a uh, networking or kind of network uh, condition to produce something which accompanies the movement of the body. Now, do you knit in the fur industry? No, no, we don't knit. What is your fur? Is it uh, knitting? Is it weaving? Is it uh, unwoven? Well, both are uh, existing. It's uh, uh, woven on a warp. Uh, both are uh, existing. So I'm going to maybe to introduce what we do. Yes, yes, and then we'll see the samples. Uh, well, we are in... We are at a crossroad between animal protection, because many, many people say, well, we don't want to be associated to the difficult uh, pictures we see of animals being mal, um, uh, ill treated. And at the same time, we want to uh, push the synthetic fiber to something more respectful. We didn't want to be in this, uh, you know, uh, position. I mean, either producing polluting synthetic or uh, having animals sufferings. So we tried and produce material that meet the two criteria. So either from recycling or from uh, 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 production on the basis of uh, corn fibers. Now, your students, uh, this evolution has been integrated in your courses, I suppose. Yes, absolutely. That is included in your teaching. Yes, that is a deliberate will of the school to train both the teachers and the students to those new technologies and to those uh, new uh, expectations by the creators, but also by the, uh, the consumers. So we put a stress on that more and more. And it is something that we are asked to teach to our uh, students. What do you mean? I mean, the industries ask you to do so? Uh, that, is, that is what you mean? Yes, absolutely. And also a demand from the students to have more and more information on what they will be able to use uh, in terms of material that won't be polluting. And we can give those advices on the path they have to follow. They must understand that there is no ready-made answer uh, using non-polluting material on the one hand, but, uh, you know, dangerous for uh, uh, animals on the other side. Well, we were talking about that on the former, during the former round table. We, you, you know, where is uh, the virtuous scheme? A 100% uh, virtuous uh, uh, circle does not uh, exist, as a matter of fact. Now, Bruno, you uh, have demands from the industry. Do you have the same positive pressure bearing on you? I mean, uh, do they ask you to uh, include all this into your uh, teaching activity? Well, we are going to continue working on the natural materials, but we've got to make them sounder and more legitimate. Therefore, we've got to work with other materials of a vegetal origin, I suppose, to find a touch that will be similar to the one of leather, leather but that won't be leather. Well, this is... Uh, in demand among the students, uh, 
that are more educated on the uh, animal suffering and so on and so forth. Uh, also in the sourcing and the processing of the material, chrome-plated uh, parts and so on and so forth. At the moment, we uh, can develop uh, products without any chromium. This is developed in France and in Italy, no metal or so. And we uh, have succeeded in working on other organics uh, uh, base, such as uh, fish skin or uh, hen uh, uh, legs or uh, beef, beef intestines and so on and so forth. Uh, so those are natural uh, materials that we never used before. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. At the moment, we, we uh, want to have zero waste, but this is... Uh, common to the whole uh, sector, but also want to work on the recomposed leathers from two leather substances. And this supplements the existing uh, uh, range of uh, materials that are permanently recycling, everlasting material. So isn't there any degradability of those materials, of the uh, recycled material? You know, I'm turning to the engineer. Well, we are just starting, we are just starting. So we must uh, have time to understand uh, how this material, such as Pignatex, for example, based on leather, what is the uh, wear rate and the renewing rate, we don't really know at the moment. Well, for 15 years, we have uh, had questions on biosourcing and so on and so forth. Well, in the textile sector, uh, we don't want to recover uh, fabric uh, just to produce, uh, you know, uh, 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 handkerchiefs or whatever. Now, we, uh, what we want to do is, uh, you know, uh, consider the molecules and reconsider the starting chain that uh, leads to the production of the finished material. There is a fabulous example in the textile sector that is exam the example of the artificial lawn. Uh, it's not degradable, but if you compare it to the normal lawn uh, with the uh, mowing, uh, the watering, and so on and so forth, well, we find that the uh, balance is more in favor of the synthetic lawn. Well, I like this example. You know, I think it is uh, self-explanatory, as a matter of fact. Do you think the same? Yes, for fur. I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt, you know, but... Uh, for fur, we have carried out studies that have surprised everybody, and some say that those uh, studies are not valid. It's, it, it shows that a synthetic fur has less impact than, than a, a natural fur, a vison uh, fur, for example, due to the uh, you know, wastewater and the chemicals that are used for uh, the production of natural fur. I understand that it's difficult to, to, to believe because there is an emotional reflex. You, you can't find that a synthetic is more virtuous than a, than a natural product. But it is the case, and it shows that there is a, a median way to explore. Now, we talked about that at the press conference this morning. Uh, there is clearly uh, uh, the opinion but also a need for information to be delivered to the consumers. Uh, you know, concerning this synth synthetic material, you are still uh, living in a, a, in a, a, a context which, in which uh, the synthetic is not well appreciated, though it, is, uh, it appears to be uh, more virtuous than the others now. Yes, we have progressed a lot in this respect. Well, what we can say is that all research on the synthetic fiber, uh, all this research is uh, used now to do better and more with natural fibers, to give uh, those uh, natural fibers functions that they had not at the beginning, functionalities that they had not at the beginning. And it's surprising to see how all those years of research uh, from the nylon uh, on are now used in another uh, type of uh, raw material. Well, I'm not an engineer, and I don't understand much to anything, as a matter of fact. But what is surprising in the innovation, innovation technology is uh, how innovation finds uh, uh, ancillary applications in other sectors. 
So we always uh, have to look at the other sectors, and that's why I'm happy to have all of you around me. Now, other innovations, how does it happen on the variant side? Well, I'm just going to come back to what has just been said. I think that uh, now, since the creation of the company, uh, the basic idea, even before creating our company, was to uh, analyze the life cycle. We just can't uh, consider one point of uh, the life cycle and say, well, this is better than uh, anything else. And we, we've got to encompass the whole life cycle, uh, including the utilization uh, implications. To, to answer your question, of course, there is a wear in the recycling cycle, but this uh, wear is uh, uh, due to the process itself. You know, at a given time, we won't be able to put this recycled material into the new processes, and we'll have to add something. So there is a first step to be done, which consists in improving those processes for them to accept uh, the recycled material better. And then, uh, well, uh, we can uh, improve a process uh, and think uh, about uh, other uh, questions, such as the recycling of uh, packagings and so on and so forth. It's still necessary to have those packagings. This is what we try and do. Does, it, uh, does this, um, is this included into the Procede Tech? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, of course, uh, there are the craftsmen uh, know-how, which is uh, included into the Procede Tech, but also the industrial uh, processes. Yes, but on this question, I'd like to come back to the project that uh, I mentioned before, the uh, uh, challenge that we have. The, the theme was uh, alternate leather and uh, uh, related material. That is an action that we develop each and every year. It lasts uh, four months. It is uh, supported by GM Western Foundation, and uh, it uh, you know, it. Um, what I've seen there, uh, those that are uh, trained at the IFM, the uh, Management Fashion Institute, and we've got uh, uh, design students at the NC. They are given a theme each and every year, and they've got four months to design and implement a project. I don't know whether it is possible to have some pictures. Well, those are the pictures that. Uh, well, here we are. Maybe we can see the next pictures. It will be more explanatory. We had three projects this year. The first one was a uh, handbag in uh, uh, fish leather with a partnership of a new uh, uh, company, which is Ictio Square Marin de France. Those are young engineers that are based in Lyon, and uh, they have uh, uh, used this um, byproduct of the food industry. You know, uh, all the sushi enterprise, for example, or the uh, caviar uh, companies. I uh, heard that uh, there is caviar made in France at the moment. So the sturgeon, sturgeon skin, for example, is. Uh, uh, processed uh, by this uh, young company and uh, you see uh, this is a salmon leather this is the uh, winning project this year it's called the Scania and uh, backpack there are other projects that's another bag this one is called Leon it's based on uh, uh, leather scraps, but uh, woven with uh, flax. And the straps are made of synthetic material because the team has worked on this. I mean, they have analyzed the life cycle very clearly, very, with a uh, very documented, uh, in a very documented way. And uh, they have decided that uh, if this uh, bag is to be sustainable, the straps must be made of nylon. 
Well, uh, this uh, confirms what we said before. There is no ready-made answer. And they have also used uh, the uh, flanks of uh, uh, the bovines. Uh, they have uh, uh, reused a process which dates back from the Middle Ages. It consists in uh, dipping uh, this uh, 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 beef skin on uh, uh, bee wax. And the last project is a flax-made shoe, 98% made of flax, and it is uh, compostable. At the end of its life, you can just take the uh, lacing out, and uh, you can uh, cut the shoe for it to be composted uh, quicker. It's a tinted flax processed with a natural resin on the surface. It's really a very interesting piece of work. When is the next competition? Next year, next year. Well, you had those results uh, rather soon. Well, uh, next year you've got to continue working with uh, DS mode and so on and so forth. You know, uh, I'm very much in favor of the school conference. Well, uh, your uh, establishment is not specially, is not really a school, but I think exchanges among the schools in terms of training, this is something which is uh, rather precious, you know. Do you have such contacts? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had a reform in last September. DMA does not exist any longer. That is now DMAD. And, uh, it's part and parcel of the students' missions to create pieces uh, with this reflection, with this consideration. Well, we are very, very frequently asked what is our relationship with ecology. Well, I think uh, people should visit uh, our one of our workshops. They will uh, find that we don't scrap anything. Uh, you know, we uh, work with all our scraps, we reuse them, and our uh, connection to ecology, I think this is something that we have had for a very long time already. Then we use less and less exotic woods for many reasons. Firstly, it's very costly, very expensive, and there is an impact on the planet. Aterka, I mean the... material we use are uh, so surprising that if we add an exotic uh, wood uh, in addition to that, well, it, uh, it's, it's too much. We don't need this to uh, uh, enhance uh, our woods. You know, uh, we want, uh, on the contrary, to uh, promote, uh, well, very uh, popular woods. You've got uh, some samples. I think that uh, you have some samples too, Gabby. Well, let's start with the first one. Oui. Uh, Est-ce que je peux demander uh, à la régie de passer les slides? Can the uh, control room uh, put my slides on screen, please? Thank you. Euh, faut savoir que la membrane qui, qui est sous la marqueterie. So as I said, uh, we cut the pieces from behind. So it's marquetry. It's inlaid wood. So it's it's cut from behind, and you actually really can see the results only at the end. Uh, up up until recently ago, we failed uh, half of our uh, products. Uh, now, this we, we use here uh, natural rubber. And recently, we found some rubber which seems to be much more adhesive. We, need, we still need to conduct tests. The problem is that it comes from the, the petrochemical industry. So now we need to uh, strike the right balance between something that is durable and something uh, that uh, will last uh, uh, over time. Now, um, but thanks, so thanks, thanks to this product, uh, we've uh, won a lot of contests and uh, uh, we've really uh, uh, raised our, our standing. 
then, then in 2014, so I, I, I wanted to find an alternative to this pneumatic system. And we thought we should try and get rid uh, of the, the air which is inside, and that we could use the, the objects that would be inside. So we had to put some textile inside. It's uh, lycra. Well, again, it's not very uh, environment friendly, but it's, it was the only textile I found that could uh, uh, move with the rubber, with the, ru the rubber layer. So. Well, I mean, lycra is there for a reason, of course. You're not going to throw away years of, uh, of experience. Well, the thing is also is that rubber has 600% elasticity, so you could actually uh, extend this, uh, but uh, this might uh, damage the wood. So we, we worked with a, an adhesive engineer. Uh, we, I, we, we used to use uh, neoprene, but now it's uh, another type of adhesive. So much for the, the flexible technology, and at Arca we have something else. But there's a real uh, environmental debate about this. Uh, so this is uh, thermal, thermoformed wood. It's uh, it's glued with PET, so it's the same plastic used uh, in uh, plastic in well water bottles. So the problem is that every time you want to create a curve with wood, you need to uh, use a mold, which means a lot of uh, manufacturing time, and very often. Uh, the mold was not included is th in quotes because, uh, uh, well, private customers uh, do not understand that uh, you, we have to make a mold for every single item. Uh, and also, in my the, in the school where I taught in China, we throw away uh, panels and molds every year because of this. So uh, we de we've decided at Arca to create a, a thermal uh, formable wood. So you can heat it up after after it's been varnished, and then we form it. Uh, we we to the uh, we, we form it and try to uh, arrange uh, the uh, the desired form. It's it basically it cools down in four or five minutes. Now it's uh, it's if it's a very very uh, sh sharp angle, a steep angle, uh, it requires a ten or fifteen minutes uh, cool down, but. Um, Originally, it was not meant to, to make something uh, environment friendly. Now, marquetry is about uh, cutting a, a background uh, and cutting uh, different pieces. Now, we use grids that we either 3D print or that we get uh, from uh, uh, other suppliers. We stamp this very strongly, and uh, by doing that, uh, the, uh, the surface uh, of uh, the surface of the background appears in the foreground, so it looks like art marquetry. It's uh, it's an alternative to marquetry. It's uh, actually it's uh, it's usually uh, traditionally to, usually to, it's normally it's a defect in marquetry, but actually we use this type of defect. We use the the asperities, the the roughness of the surface here. So this is one of the different uh, proxies that we have developed. And we've also developed uh, an inflatable uh, type of wood, what well, I don't have here, but uh, uh, the entire panel distorts when you use uh, air impulses. And also, we are working currently with the Ecole de Mines Engineering School on, uh, on plasma. So we, we, try, we try not to use glue or adhesives, solvents. Uh, we also try to find uh, surface uh, treatment without uh, solvents. We, we try to... Uh, we try to spray uh, high temperature matter on wood. And we've been convinced by scientists because the, uh, the machines that are used for this today are less and less expensive. Uh, so far, uh, the plasma torches uh, would cost uh, thousands of euros, but it's less expensive. Well, God, you have an amazing uh, uh, toolkit. Well, so we, we don't really think about uh, industrial applications or products except with the uh, Ecole de Mines Engineering School. Yeah, but a, a lot is happening in you. I mean, you have, you're very creative. But then, of course, the, ins the, the industry should draw inspiration from this. Of course, provided there are some industrial applications here. Well, that's, that would be, our, I wouldn't say our problem, but the thing is that we, we don't earn a livelihood 
from these applications. We, we, we don't do it for industry, industrial applications, or we just do it for the fun of it, or to find alternatives to existing applications. Well, that's amazing. Varian, what about uh, flax or linen? What could you tell about uh, linen? Well, I don't have my, uh, my toy box here, but I, uh, I'm sure I have a few samples for you. Well, maybe you could also tell us about the, the, the infancy of this project, you know, the, the genesis of it all. Maybe you can tell us about the new uses. But anyway, enough talking. Right, um, as I said, originally the idea was to, um, to use composite materials in a different way. So we wanted to uh, change the original material. We wanted to be more virtuous. We wanted to use uh, as many plant-based materials as possible. But we also had to find applications, so that's where what we do might be slightly different than what you do, because right from the start we try to uh, envision an industrial application. And we wanted to uh, make this for markets that would be different from the traditional composite materials, so uh, aerospace, uh, reinforcements, and so on. Because plant-based materials will never have the same properties, for example, as carbon fiber. I mean, it's traditional materials are, are made for secure applications. It might be possible going forward, but it's not the case today. So we wanted to offset this lack of technical properties with, you know, other aspects. Uh, because you can offset this visually, aesthetically. So we wanted to bring uh, this uh, visual uh, touch. So it behaves like a composite material like plastic. So we use uh, uh, stamps. Uh, I suppose you use the same in marquetry or in, uh, in joinery. So it's heated at a very low temperature between uh, 90 and 110 degrees Celsius max. It's, it's heated for one or two minutes and 10 minutes uh, for the cool down. So it's, it's, it's really fast. You don't want to, uh, w you, you need to move really fast, but it's also a lot of, uh, it means also a lot of energy savings. So this material here is delivered as a, as a sheet or a foil, and then users can heat that up and then stamp it or press it, and then have uh, three-dimensional dim forms or shapes that are mainly used for coating today, for example, for walls or ceilings, and it's used for uh, interior design. Besides, this, these materials have been functionalized. That is, uh, they can be used for decoration. Also, they have a function. So for example, it, it's, uh, it's a sound insulator. So we create specific foams for that. Uh, but also, you can include uh, uh, LEDs inside to, to uh, uh, emit light. We all, we're also working on other projects to have materials that can produce sounds. So it ranges from very simple modules that you can simply glue on, on the wall or on panels. It can be 3D or, or wafered to much more complex products. Well, that's a fitting transition. Well, um, so my own background, I've been in the textile industry for 10 years. But before that, I worked in the digital industry. So uh, I've been working on textiles quite a lot in the last 10 years. And actually, five years ago, I released a book about uh, the state of the art or the state of play in the industry, in the textile industry. In the last years, I wanted to uh, combine these two uh, experiences. And uh, so uh, I've uh, released this book, uh, Human Beings Connected to Materials. So can we have the slides, please, for Mrs. Brower? So that's a fitting transition. So human beings have a relationship to materials today, but today it's been completely disrupted. When you talk about materiality, you talk about the structure of materials, but also um, the, the visual representation of, uh, of uh, objects. And we can say today that these two approaches are fully hybrid, which means that we are fully reviewing our perception of materials. Because today we live in a, in, a, in a fully digital world. We are constantly connect, connected. So maybe you, you know this. It, maybe you know this type of marketry. It's interactive marketry, which means that when you touch this piece of wood, it uh, will uh, emit a sound or music or even light. 
So the idea is that today materials do more than having a shape. Thanks to uh, connected devices, you can have something that is really different. For example, earlier on, you, you talked about uh, research uh, in the tactile aspect for new levers. Well, this tactile uh, approach could be also used for this type of uh, tools. Now, we've also talked about 3D printing. And so we can see that with all these new tools, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, and 3D printing, every time you design a new object made of a specific material with these technological tools, well, every time you do that, you can uh, really, um, you can really have a, a very early design and you can design shapes that would be impossible to craft with traditional tools. So here we have uh, uh, an engraving uh, of uh, an artist who is also a mathematician, Pat Patrice Jena. So this uh, is a gyrid which represents uh, a mathematical function. And it's something that is absolutely impossible to craft with uh, a manual tool or with tra traditional technology. And uh, last, well, we're back to textile here. So textiles are something that are really close to human beings. It's been with us for, uh, you know, since time immemorial. And so there's a whole lot of research in this area where neurosciences are cross-fertilized with other types of sciences. And the idea is to try and let emotions run through textiles, whether visually, or uh, in terms of smell, for example. So if we have an artist here, Jenny Tillotson. And so there's a, a tree of fragrances. That's, it's known as uh, colors and smells. So it's a variation of colors and smells depending on uh, people's moods. And uh, the, the, so this system actually uses uh, the, the, the bodily fluids of people, basically. So the idea, the point here is that we can combine these two worlds, uh, materials and digital. Thank you very much for this, well, very quick presentation. You wanted to say something. Yes, uh, about the tactile aspect with leathers. Le leather is really the, the, uh, the archetypal original material. It's very close to the skin. And uh, it's interesting to see that at the moment, there are lots of projects about uh, uh, leather uh, or, or uh, velvets that feel like icy leather. Uh, it's used on uh, uh, double-sided materials with, for example, velvets inside. And uh, there's a whole work about the, about the feel with lasers, for example. Um, so so uh, basically, um, Companies are trying to reprodu reproduce the, the feel of leather on uh, artificial or, or other uh, surfaces, other textiles. It's you know it's a product leather that uh, because of its tactile properties reassures people, and people remain loyal to leather. Well, I think this this will be one of the challenge for all new materials that want to replace uh, leather, such as for example mushroom leather, apple leather, or, or other materials. Well, actually, we should not call this leather, right? But um, but it's fair to say that uh, I think this is going to be one of the main challenges, and, and people will have to find a solution. You can't just try to replace leather if you don't also find a replacement for this texture, which is also the ver the very beauty, the advantage of leather. So. So what? A, but we, we but we do have. Uh, I mean, this sensation exists. Yes, it does. Uh, there are some very very soft mater materials that can deceive uh, uh, people who are not insiders, and there are new materials. Can we have a look? Yes, sure. I brought some samples for you. So we we've talked around about recycling, which is really uh, uh, making headway. So we're talking here about plastic waste. Uh, plastic bottles, 
and we so we use all these wastes uh, to make fur. It, it's amazing. So we found a, a new company which has a new recycling uh, process, and at the end of the day, uh, the result is very close to uh, uh, pure poly polyester. Can you explain all the differences, the nuances uh, between uh, uh, you know polyester and so on? Well, well, let's look at your toys, so to speak. So it's been a challenge for us to use recycled material because it's three-dimensional material. I mean, fur is tri-dimensional material, but we have something with very short hair, very short fur, and brands are really happy about it. Right. Well, well long fur or long hair is not the same uh, uh, work. Well, I don't know whether you've seen the, the work done by our, our Chinese friends. Uh, oh, you, you did this? Yes, we did. Oh, it's amazing. Well, have a look. Um, when you go to Hall 3, uh, you have examples, uh, exhibits of what the AIE has done with its Chinese partners. So it's, it's, it's innovation, and it's, it's all related to the cultural aspects. It's really amazing. But anyway, back to uh, uh, the topic. Well, this is 100% this is recycled. Well, this is something that looks like wool, and it's 100% recycled. Actually, you couldn't tell that uh, it was a waste uh, uh, only recently. Also, uh, this is uh, uh, false uh, fur. Again, it's a recycled polyester, and it cannot be recycled again. And uh, we are in a partnership at the moment to try and see whether we can really start this 100% uh, uh, cycle, 100% uh, uh, loop. Um, because that can be a loop if you start from uh, oil. I mean, it, it, do, it is useful. And it does have technical properties that you would not have with other materials. And we're also developing something else with uh, Dupont. It's a uh, uh, corn or maize-based uh, polyester. So it's, it's biotechnology. Corn-based polyester. So you're telling me it's the same properties as, uh, as uh, polyester fibers. But it's biosourced. Yes, so it comes from biofuels in the US. So it means uh, uh, energy savings of about 20 to 60% uh, relative to standard uh, polyester. So it, it's quite a significant uh, cut in uh, energy consumption. And, and it's the same with uh, grease, greenhouse gases. So th this is 37% plant-based. And so, t actually, technically and technologically, you can reach 100%, but it means a bit more work. And uh, ultimately, the objective for us is to reach 100% in a few years from now. So this is in progress. It's been only, uh, you know, uh, in progress for, for a few months, but I hope you like it. Oh, no, we do like it. And I, it seems that uh, the whole fashion industry has really... Uh, uh, throwing its full weight behind this. Well, we have no choice. We, 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 want, uh, we have to, to meet this requirement. Yes, it, it's... You can't tell the difference. Yes, and so we're making progress. Uh, very soon we'll have, uh, uh, you know, long fur, long hair fur, but it's very difficult to evolve processes. So it's great, right, isn't it? And it's just, uh, you know, uh, our early prototypes. Our early, it's our first products. Right, and I, I was talking about the, the tactile aspect because it's it's the first thing that you, you that you feel. Yeah, right. And and the next challenge will be to produce uh, long hair fur. You sh so we can work with uh, polyester. We will try to work with acrylic. But that it's more difficult, but that will be the second stage, and we want to uh, uh, to uh, continue down this road. Right. Can can you create something with uh, mirrors and? Uh, well, I know our friend Stephen uh, is developing. Uh, have, well, uh, uh, the, actually, the gentleman here is developing inflatable fur with uh, the Compagnon de Devoir, the journeyman. Well, everybody's involved. No, joking aside, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really lucky to meet people like you. Uh, you don't all know each other, but I'm lucky enough to know all of you, and it's great to, to meet people who have. Uh, uh, ideas for the future. I was saying, saying uh, something similar uh, uh, at the Avantex forum earlier on, and it's great when Exhibitor A meets Exhibitor B. You meet people that you not you don't know, so uh, it, it, and you know, getting to know each other in in, in real is great. Uh, do our friends from the f uh, from uh, the audience have any questions? The the, the king of uh, the king of false fur. Don't you have any questions? 
our Danish friend. Uh, our friend makes a fake fur. Do you want to have, ask a question? Well, I might have a comment. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Jan Erik. Uh, I live in Copenhagen and uh, I work in the fur industry. Um, and of course, um, I've been sitting listening to your discussion. I think it's it's uh, very interesting, and I think I have a um, uh, I have an open mind for new development and new ideas. And I think that we all understand we have to go in that direction. My one comment, it's more a comment than a question, is of course that I know I, I have full respect for what you do, but I'm sorry when you when you automatically say that all fur production is connected to animals uh, suffering which is not true. And then you also pull out your uh, research and say that research shows that fake fur is uh, better for the environment than the real fur. Well, we also have a lot of research that shows the other picture, and we all know what we, you can do with research. You can always paint the picture that you want. So um, I think the bottom line is that I, th I think there is a market right now for both of us, and I think maybe we should start treating each other with some respect. Thank you very much. Any comment? Well, as you said, you can find several type of studies. Then you are free to believe your studies, and I am free to believe my study, which are very serious, and they are not... You are very serious? Hmm? No. You are very serious? I am, yes. Anyone is very serious around here? So... Except Monsieur Le Prezé. <laughs> what I read was... What I read was that animal-based material and like some natural material like cotton, for instance, have a, a worse impact than synthetic, then I'm not saying synthetic is better for the environment because no textile is, has to be good for the environment because a textile always has an impact. And then you can choose to, read, uh, the pic to, to, take the, to read the picture you want to read. Then we are also very connected to the animal-friendly conversation, and we have this idea that uh, if we can avoid to kill to kill animal, at least in this field of fashion, it's important to do it. So, but I respect what you say. But for us, it's important to save animals. Well, I think you're right to uh, look at this th through the societal lens. because we will probably continue to uh, use for or consume a lot of fish, for example, and, and fish leather, for example. But it's, it's fair to say that today some people no longer want to hear about uh, animal-based uh, food. Now, of course, uh, nothing is as good as uh, true leather, but also nothing is as good as, uh, as fake fur. Anyway. So there's also the, the idea of uh, recycling, of uh, recovered uh, waste. You might have heard about this operation, uh, a Tricolor. Uh, so there's uh, an engineering firm uh, which is currently working uh, on uh, trying to uh, re-establish the French wool industry. They started from a very simple observation. So. Uh, for example, if you look at a merino sheep, uh, the, 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 the wool of sheep, uh, merino sheep that were produced uh, in the south of France was burnt because there was no use for it. Well, actually, uh, there's, a, there's a project, a uh, European uh, wool workshop, Atelier Laine d'Europe, uh, and I'm, I'm, I know them quite well. Well, we still have sheep around uh, in the region, and every year there's a wool market, people uh, uh, get to know each other. Farmers try to promote their production, and there are still uh, some uh, uh, sheep shearing contests, because it's actually quite difficult uh, to shear uh, uh, sheep without hurting them. Well, that, that's the very beauty of civilization. I mean, we have our friends from abroad, but it's great to see here the, the diversity of uh, cultures. Uh, God, uh, I mean, thank God uh, we we, it's very it's very interesting to uh, retain our techniques uh, we can work we can keep uh, noble materials such as leather but also we can work on replacement and materials uh, but visually these materials can also have the the same feel but it's also very important to try and develop n new applications 
that can uh, give solutions to the industry, that can uh, meet the demand of consumers, and can, then can protect the environment uh, as well. So it's a win-win. Right, do we have any other question from the floor, from our friends? If not, because uh, our interpreters have to leave at uh, 4.15 to a different conference. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Christine, Blandine, Sophie. Boys, thank you very much. Thank you for coming and explaining what you do. And thank you very much uh, uh, for shedding some light uh, uh, on what you do and uh, giving us uh, your different uh, uh, viewpoints. Uh, and keep, keep at it. Thank you very much. All eyes are on you.